back in my nasty, disgusting garage for this one. <laughs> Fellas, have you ever fantasized about moving to a remote forest to build a cabin with your bare hands? Or maybe you want to become a shepherd and raise a herd of sheep or goats. What about digging a giant water park in the ground in the middle of nowhere? Are you unsatisfied with your ability to act out these manly fantasies of becoming Hugh Glass because you have to work a 9 to 5 at a startup or the late shift at a Waffle House just to pay your bills? Well, maybe capitalism can fill that hole in your soul with manly products that allow you to cosplay as Paul Bunyan. I'm not really talking about the pointlessly gendered stuff like pink razors for women and blue ones for men, or that body wash they try to sell us that doubles as shampoo, triples as face wash, quadruples as fuel injection carb cleaner, and quintuples as a military grade MRE that you can slurp down like a go-gurt. I'm talking about products that are already very heavily associated with masculinity like axes and poker sets that brands have ratcheted up the manliness of to the point of parody. I'm talking about man crates and tactical everything and jerky bouquets for your meth-dealing Hells Angels wife. Pictured here. The holidays are finally over and millions of men across the country woke up Christmas morning to boxes of bacon soap and bullhorn mugs and cigars packed in World War II ammo boxes. For some fucking reason. <laughs> A friend recently sent me a TikTok of Not Bad Dan discussing how we have to put a stop to the man gift industry selling us pork shoulder scented detergent and wooden headphones, but also the guys have to be better about articulating what we want for our birthdays or on Christmas or even when we go into a store looking to buy jeans or a new pair of the same shoes we've been wearing for the last 10 years. I get that guys are hard to buy gifts for, but I am tired of being told that I want a bacon scented body wash. When you type in gifts for guys, this is what comes up, okay? Do you see this? Do you think I'm about to go on a camping trip with the Lumineers? What is this? It's crazy the amount of guys I've assisted in a retail environment who walk in, take five steps past the threshold, stop and scan the entire store like they just came out of a fugue state, who, when I ask if they need help, reply with the most blanket, unhelpful thing like, I need a jacket. Dude, this is a Wendy's restaurant. Can you be more specific? What kind of jacket? What do you need it to do? Did you see something that you liked before coming in or did you just wander into the first store that had a facade that implied we might have what you're looking for? Did you even have a plan? In my experience, men can be some of the worst customers on the planet. They're timid in some cases, pedantic know-it-alls in others, and in general have no idea how to describe the function any given product must possess to be desirable or serve the purpose they need it to fulfill. When helping guys with clothing, it's like they've never heard the word silhouette or taper or been told something looks flattering on them, or asked, how does that feel? Or even, how do you feel? <laughs> it's like they've never tried any clothes on before and are so disconnected from their own bodies that if you removed their head from their shoulders, they wouldn't even notice. Some of this can be blamed on patriarchal conditioning among men to believe that Shopping in fashion is for girls only, or gay, because when they were five they got into mom's closet and walked around in her heels before their dad scolded them for fear he'd turn queer. <laughs> now guys can't even go to a Target to buy underwear without feeling some level of shame or embarrassment because, dude, gross, dicks go in underwear. At what point does it become gay to even have a penis? To, to be a man is to be built like a Ken doll, I guess. I, I swear, eventually it's gonna get so out of hand that these alpha males are gonna start saying uh, that having sex with a woman is gay because they're soft and smell good. Ew, you fuck women? Obviously the manliest thing you can do is fuck another dude. Man-centric gifts and products have been a thing for basically ever. I remember Hickory Farms was always the go-to gift for your dad or uncle in the 90s with its plethora of smoked and jerked meats and their barnyard storefronts. Every man in the 80s wore Dracar Noir to the point that it's become a joke in media. It came in a sleek, all-black packaging and focused on themes of masculinity, sensuality, decadence, darkness, and lust. The name Drakkar is just a brand respelling of the word Drekker, a type of Viking longship, and we all know how manly Vikings were. When cigarette companies were still able to advertise in the US, everybody wanted to be the Marlboro Man and Joe Camel. They even made a movie titled Harley Davidson and the Marlboro Man starring Mickey Rourke and Don Johnson, two of the most macho men in the 80s whose 
thick denim covered buns women fawned over. I can barely get that one out. Cigarettes have also always been a man thing to the point that Philip Morris invented Virginia Slims as their female version of smokes while men were left inhaling the unfiltered Oldsmobile exhaust of Lucky Strike. Speaking of Harley Davidson, motorcycles have also always been a thing for men and boys because you're basically riding a gun. And speaking of guns, anything military themed was also for boys only, like the original G.I. Joe action figures with their articulating knees and elbows that Barbie dolls were denied. Women don't need articulating dolls, just like they don't need pockets in their pants or the right to bodily autonomy. I kid, obviously, I, they do, they should. I'm not gonna sit here and suggest that I'm not susceptible to masculine marketing by brands myself. I own a Harley and have gotten my hands dirty in the garage, working on it and chopping it up. There is something undeniable about building or fixing heavy machinery that you can then take out for a spin. It's awesome. I own a mid-century style Stanley lunchbox, like one of those guys in that photo uh, when they built the Empire State Building. I also own a Spyderco knife and use charcoal soap. But I also own stuff that maybe wouldn't be considered manly that I use every day, like skincare products and deodorant. And on occasion, I like to dress up in a French maid outfit while I vacuum. Your masculinity isn't defined by the products you buy and own. It's much more fluid than that, just like how femininity isn't defined by the ability to birth another tiny human. These ideas are constructs, and the way they're applied in the modern age is still, unfortunately, determined and defined by 10,000-year-old hunter-gatherer standards by Let's face it, misogynistic alpha males. <laughs> Before basic technology or agriculture was invented, or even the idea of civilization was a thought in <clears throat> Rog's mind here, it made sense from a biological and physiological point of view that males in a tribe would go out hunting saber-toothed tigers and mammoths, and the females in the tribe would take care of the children and gather berries because on average, Human males are typically bigger and stronger. I'm avoiding using the words man and woman here because those terms didn't exist according to a quick Wikipedia search. The ancient world had no basis of understanding gender as it has been understood in the humanities and social sciences for the past few decades. The term gender had been associated with grammar for most of history and only started to move toward it being a malleable cultural construct in the 50s and 60s. All of this was necessary for our survival before we became the dominant species on the planet by taming Promethean fire where we had the free time to <coughs> philosophize and create systems of control like race and gender. It just doesn't serve a purpose in a technologically advanced society where you can go to one of a dozen grocery stores in most major cities and exchange tokens doled out by the government in exchange for food rather than having to chase down a gazelle on the African safari. It's just not especially helpful to shove people into restrictive boxes anymore. Well, it's helpful for a few. You know, the people at the top. The people in power. The status quo. But because everyone is so worried about fitting in and being accepted by their peers or people they admire, we're constantly in search of ways to appeal to those groups through gender affirming care like growing a beard if you're a man and taking Viagra when your dick stops working or buying a big axe that you'll use literally once a year. If that. And then if you're a real weirdo, you might even just mount it on your wall for easy access, I guess. Hey, Paul. Capitalism, another idea that would have made Rog's caveman head explode if he could even comprehend it, paved the way for anyone being able to buy a thing and feel more like the man or woman they wanna be, whether it's superficial or not. You no longer need to actually learn how to rebuild a carburetor or field dress a deer when there's a YouTube tutorial that will walk you through it. You don't need to learn to ride a horse when you can just request an Uber. Hell, you don't even need to learn to drive anymore if the public transit in your area is relatively accessible. We're all just cosplaying our way through life in order to feel more comfortable in our own skin based on social norms and constructs that are a fiction. But for some stupid reason, these products that are marketed to men think we all wanna become lumberjacks and farmhands. It's the same marketing that's made Taylor Sheridan a superstar among hyper-masculine men who fantasize about being a character in Yellowstone, or 1883, or 1923. 
this dude's got a whole Homestead Heroes expanded libertarian universe. <laughs> I'm not even opposed to those types of hunky archetypes. Rambo fucking rules, and I'd love to be able to have a farm and a garden and build a barn and hunt my own food. But even living off the land costs a shitload of money and requires a lot of startup capital to live off the grid. Even those who do live in rural areas suffer from lack of conveniences and access to basic amenities like hospitals that are properly staffed. I've also got a weak constitution when it comes to cold weather and have thrown my back out multiple times just bending over to spit out my toothpaste. There's no way I could bale hay or break a stallion. I much prefer to sit in bed playing video games, eating Oreos, and making silly jokes on YouTube. I'd love it if it were more acceptable for a man to be a stay-at-home dad to a powerful, breadwinning wife who commands a coven of vampires. I can't be the only man who would prefer to live on room service and play with Legos all day, so why is every top 10 gift ideas for men just knives, whiskey, and cured meats. I'm not about to join an arctic expedition that requires I travel light and pack calorie-dense food and spelunking gear in case of a massive blizzard. It's like these men's gift stores assume that customers are going to have to resort to cannibalism on their morning commute. So now let's take a look at some so-called perfect gifts for guys that some of you may have given or received this holiday season. Why the fuck do I need tactical stockings? Christmas decorations are used literally once a year before being shoved in a box and put in the attic, which defeats their tacticality. The, the word tactical is so bastardized at this point that anything claiming to be tactical usually means it's anything but, and most likely just cheap crap. It's like the techwear trend where everyone wants to dress like a character in Blade Runner, but you're just wearing a bunch of PVC and neoprene that doesn't breathe and is only a few steps away from being Cenobite bondage gear. Tactics are defined as the art or science of disposing military or naval forces for battle and maneuvering them in battle. So if I have tactical stockings that I only use on Christmas, what exactly is it doing to dispose of these military forces? Unless I can actually wear the damn thing and keep a cache of waterproof matches and a compass inside while I storm Santa's workshop, they're just a waste of ripstop and Velcro. Manly Manco has over a dozen macho gift boxes for sale that are just crammed full of old beef. You can gift your hubby the Master Brewer or Spice Slayer box, or if he's kinda into all things men, you can get him the Coffee Bacon Ammo Can box, where he can declare war on weak ass coffee and weaker meats. It's unclear how buying a box of foodstuffs that will ultimately destroy your toilet with hot diarrhea is declaring war on diner coffee. Uh, are weaker meats like chicken or fish? Will eating the flesh of an animal that could impale me with one of its massive horns make me strong? Like how a glass of milk makes my bones more powerful? <laughs> fish is obviously girl meat. <laughs> It's only macho, <laughs> it's only macho if you pull it from a stream like Golem and eats it raw and wriggling. <laughs> I can't do a Golem impression. This is the first take too, I'm leaving it in. I don't wanna do that again, that's fucking embarrassing. Nothing manlier than poker. Ah uh, yes, having a crippling gambling addiction is peak masculinity. You've probably seen the James Bond film Casino Royale. One of the best parts of the movie is the high stakes poker game between Bond and some of the richest bad guys in the world. Here's a perfect example of someone not having a grasp of media literacy and taking the wrong thing away from a movie. That scene is gripping not because it's a bunch of borderline offensive villain stereotypes playing poker, most audiences probably had no idea what was going on in the game itself, me, but because we understood the implications of the game, not the mechanics of it or its perceived masculinity. I mean, they've got Frau Farbacina sitting at the table for fuck's sake. <laughs> Simply participating in manly activities like poker doesn't automatically make you more manly. If I decided to go to a gun range but winced every time I pulled the trigger, would that still be manly? Or would people get the ick when I shut my eyes every time I squeeze the trigger? Not very John Wick of me. Like cigars? Gross! <laughs> but if you do, how about you get a cigar whiskey set that comes with an almost coffin-shaped ashtray that would have you come to terms with your own mortality when you eventually develop mouth cancer. They honestly couldn't have picked a better name to monogram this thing with than Chad Michaels. I, I would have also accepted Chadley or Chadworth as the living embodiment of waspy indulgences. Hey, what's with cigars? Also, they stink worse than cigarettes, get soggy from sucking on them, and, and I can only ever picture this guy when I see someone puffing on one. Did I mention they stink? 
and cause mouth cancer? We all know that drinking and guns go perfectly together and no one has ever gotten hurt while participating in both activities, so let's put them together with this AR-15 whiskey decanter. Not only will this thing possibly encourage any irresponsible gun owner to pull out their gas-operated semi-automatic and fire off a few rounds after a couple of shots, but whiskey decanters are kind of pointless. Decanters are designed for things like wine that have a low alcohol content and higher amounts of tannins that encourage oxidization that enhances the flavor. This really doesn't happen with whiskey because of its high alcohol content and only trace amounts of tannins. So you bought a giant glass gun full of whiskey that serves no purpose and is just an eyesore that gives off the same energy as the frat that collects liquor bottles on their mantelpiece and hearth and shelves and literally any flat surface of their 150 year old Victorian that's converted into a rave every weekend. Maybe you're not into guns, maybe you're a baseball fan. This thing doubles as home security, but only once. Guys, stop buying novelty decanters. They're a tacky waste of space. I just can't with this whiskey smoke terrarium thing. Holy fuck. Put it next to your weird bug collection. You could just order a mystery box of man stuff from mancrates.com, which is a wild sentence. They have several different categories that include things like birthday, anniversary, and congratulations. You know, the same categories you see on the greeting card wall at your local Target or Walgreens. I was curious what they could possibly be selling under their get well category, and I thought it'd be something like Advil pressed in the shape of deer scat, but it's just nuts, moonshine, and whatever the man chow toolbox is. One would assume get well products would be something even marginally related to recuperating from the common cold or a flu. It's mind blowing that they had the perfect opportunity to sell bone broth and totally blew it. Or like a, a tactical first aid field kit. You could really only consider these remedies if you're a time traveling doctor from the 1800s. Maybe you're unsure what to get the guy in your life. Gift cards are a pretty safe bet and it lets him choose exactly what he wants. But are gift cards too femme or maybe just not substantial enough and you wanna add some heft and mass to a gift. Well, you can still give him the gift of choice and something he really needs to work for with the smash and grab gift card that's hidden inside a solid faux concrete brick. He'll finally be able to use that sledgehammer you bought him five years ago on your anniversary that he swore he'd definitely use but never has, just like the hatchet you got for his birthday and the crowbar he got on flag day. Satisfy his masculine urge to smash just fucking anything but especially a big piece of ice for some reason. <laughs> Women like to step on dried leaves, guys like to drop big chunks of ice on their driveway. The gift cards say that there is disassembly required, which is pretty clever, and also comes with a ball peen hammer, but also girly safety glasses. A real man loses an eye when working with tools, now you're a pirate. It also comes in lump of coal flavor if you wanna play a little prank on him. Honestly though, if these are the types of gifts you're thinking about getting him, just get him an actual lump of coal because he's probably the most insufferable person on the planet. And as for getting him something he has to really work for, how about a DIY kit that's basically just Legos for 40 year olds, like a pipe carving kit if he's actually a 70 year old ornithologist or a Scrimshaw making kit? What the fuck do they think guys do in their free time? Hunt elephants and chart the topography of the Amazon rainforest like they're Ernest Hemingway? The arcade game making kits are actually kind of cool. Speaking about traipsing through a jungle, you might need to have some discreet personal protection like a ballistic dart launcher that will make you feel like a modern day Indiana Jones. Or how about a bolt action pen gun to act out all your spycraft fantasies? Take cosplaying as Pierce Brosnan's James Bond one step further by going on a drive a tank experience for a measly 750 bucks. There are countless useless junk products for men that are just stuff an old hoarder would make from their collected trash that I find disrespectful to all men. Like aviation instrument gauge coasters and oil filter tumblers. I can't possibly sit here and talk about all the ridiculous products like gun shaped soap, peanut butter drill bits, 12 gauge shot glasses, gun shaped soap, a brick from the original Harley factory, or the battle coffee mug. How the fuck do you drink out of this? Just holding it looks like it would maim and or mutilate you. Does it also launch actual mortar rounds? Why is it so sharp and jagged everywhere? I can't help but feel that if you're a guy who's into this kind of aesthetic and fill your man cave with these types of products, you probably also think Andrew Tate and uh, the Meat King 
uh, Lord of Meat. What is that guy's name? Liver King. You probably also think Liver King is an idol and someone to look up to. All this stuff is just the man version of the farmhouse aesthetic for women who have a live, laugh, love decal on their bathroom mirror and carry around a Stanley Quencher cub everywhere they go. It's literally the photo negative of that. While some men might actually be rugged lumberjacks or secretly yearn for the adventurous cowboy lifestyle, the reality is often far from the fantasy of the people who live in suburbs or a metropolis. Even actual cowboys would probably mock some of these products for their quality considering most of it looks like a wish version of the real thing it's trying to imitate. The industry of man gifts with its tactical everything and over the top manliness parodies the very idea of what it means to be a man. Masculinity, like femininity, isn't a binary concept and neither is biological sex for that matter. It's a spectrum and a blend of attributes and interests that vary wildly from one individual to another. None of this takes into account different preferences, interests, or skills that would render most of this stuff useless if they don't like the smell of mahogany and rich Corinthian leather. Whether you're the guy who genuinely enjoys a good bourbon and a cigar, or the one who finds solace in a quiet evening with a book, Know that your masculinity isn't defined by the gifts you receive or the products you buy. In a world where we're constantly bombarded with messaging about what it means to be a man, perhaps the manliest thing of all is to just be yourself and embrace your unique interests and quirks, and don't be ashamed if you like the feel of big baggy boxer shorts or the gentle cupping of a pair of tidy whities You're definitely a weirdo if you wear these. That or you're European. <laughs> After all, the true essence of being a man lies in your actions, your character, and your ability to respect and embrace not just your own individuality, but that of others as well. Just be careful embracing individuality uh, too much. It's not the end all be all. You don't want to turn into Taylor Sheridan. <laughs> we have to continue to redefine masculinity, not by the products we use, but by the universally good nature of empathy and depth and not spending your money on cheap plastic crap that's been marked up a thousand percent. That's the video. Thanks so much for watching. If you made it this far, that means you're special and pretty cool in my book. Be sure to like and share and subscribe, do all that stuff. Uh, follow me on Instagram. It's uh, probably on the screen somewhere right here. Here on YouTube, on the community section, I try and give updates uh, a little bit more frequently uh, to let you guys know, you know, just the progress of what's going on. Um, so make sure you sign up for notifications if if you give a shit if you don't that's cool, too All right. Thanks. Bye Happy New Year. Hey, happy new year